Intelligence reveals that the True Sons have taken over the National Bond Bank and are using it as a stronghold to run their operations from. SHD agents must seize this opportunity to cripple their advances and dismantle the True Sons' grip on the compound. In the heart of the city, agents have been presented with a critical mission. Their objective, to disrupt the network of True Sons who have set up a stronghold in the National Bond Bank, a fortress that has been used as a hub for their operations. Bursting through the entrance, the team faced a storm of resistance from the True Sun guards. In a display of their advanced training, the agents were able to neutralize the threat and proceed deeper into the banking hall. Once the area was secure, the agents would establish defensive positions making sure to cover any angle that could see a counter-attack. When they were satisfied that their position was under control, they shifted to their primary objective, to locate the True Sun's hidden armory. Navigating through the corridors, the agents remained alert. As they reached the heart of the bank, they discovered the heavily guarded armory, a trove of deadly weapons and resources. Removing this would certainly hinder any immediate plans they had, and would likely take months for them to recover from the loss. With calculated precision, the agents unleashed on the stockpiles, reducing them to little more than burning ruins. But their mission was far from over. Pushing through the compound, they would come across communication equipment that was vital in connecting the True Sun's vast network. SHD agents, aware of the significance of this equipment, would go on to dismantle and destroy it, severing the enemy's ability to coordinate and maintain control over their forces. It was during this time that they would receive critical intel on a True Sun's leader who happened to be on site, Sergeant Bourne. Fighting through the compound, it wouldn't be long before the agents would catch up to Bourne. Surrounded by a seemingly endless wave of bodyguards, their training was put to the test. After a long fight through the bank's hallways, they would eventually corner Sergeant Bourne, taking him down before he was able to escape. With the hostile presence removed and their mission concluded, the team regrouped and made their way to the exit. We've installed the lights. The cache has been vacuum sealed. Uh, we've even set up a negative air chamber between the vaults and the rest of the branch. Good. Seems like you followed the protocol to the letter. Thank you. And what about your employees? How are they feeling? Oh, fine. Well, I've got two tellers that have called out sick the past three days, but... They're not the best workers. Pretty sure they're using this outbreak to score a paid vacation. Have you sent anyone to do a wellness check on them? No. I'll send someone to check on them. Gonna need their names and home addresses. Tim Beatty and Sarah Green. Addresses should be in their HR file. I'll get it for you. Thanks. Good work here. In a conversation between the bank director and a JTF hazmat specialist, several key points were discussed regarding the bank's preparedness during the outbreak confirming that the necessary precautions had been taken, including the installation of lights, vacuum sealing cash, and the establishment of a negative air chamber to separate the vaults from the rest of the branch, the JTF specialist acknowledged and approved of their adherence to protocols that had been outlined. Further questioning revealed that there were a couple of bank employees that have stopped showing up to work. The JTF specialist insists that they need to be checked up on. Hey, do you hear about New York? What about New York? The District Union branch in Brooklyn, they started burning all their cash. Oh, bullshit. Seriously. They said it's the protocol. That's such a waste. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, good opportunity though, huh? Who's gonna know if we burn four bags instead of five? Two bank tellers discuss what the branches in Brooklyn have been doing, burning all of the cash as precaution to destroy any potentially infected bills. Their reaction to this, seeing this as an opportunity, is likely mimicked by a larger number of others during this time across multiple other branches, showing that regardless of the procedures put in place during a time like this, human nature will always be there to undermine the greater goal. What the hell are you doing? Refilling the ATM. Did you even read the memo I sent last night? I thought it was a joke. It's not a joke. We've got orders from corporate to quarantine the cash and keep it in the vault until further notice. Do you want me to count it first? Uh, no. Just get that cash out of here. 
Do it as fast as you can, and make sure you're wearing gloves and a mask. How much do you want? 10,000? 20,000? Look, you can use the money to order more medicine. It's a win-win. How much do you need? Six months supply for a family of four. That's not how antibiotics work. You shouldn't be taking them all the time. Fine. Then, uh, a hundred doses. How much do you want for a hundred doses? Two hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> I'll have it for you tomorrow. I can meet you at the clinic. Give me the drugs, and I'll give you the cash. Here, the bank director is emulating the actions of some of his employees by using money that was meant to be destroyed. However, his motivations differ from greed. Instead, he is driven by the need to prepare for the unfolding events and safeguard his family. Specifically, he seeks to acquire antibiotics for their well-being. But regardless of motive, the damage being done here is to the same caliber. I've actually really enjoyed playing through the classified assignments again. Some are surprisingly difficult. Like most of you, I haven't touched them since the game first came out, and I actually had no idea that so many hadn't played them at all. There are only short missions, with a handful of objectives, but the intel collected from them gives a bit more detail around what it was like before everything went completely to hell. This particular mission serves as a reminder that in the midst of chaotic circumstances, greed continues to be a driving influence for many. This is partly due to the skepticism that many people harbour unless they are directly witnessing the gravity of the situation firsthand. Meanwhile, there are individuals driven by an unwavering determination to protect their loved ones, resorting to any means necessary, even if it compromises the broader perspective. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching, and Extremis Mullis, Extrema Media.